Hello, Pete. Thank you for joining me. Um, could you tell the audience who you are and what you do, please? Hey, Gudrun. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Pete Matthew. I am a chartered and certified financial planner, so I help clients organize their finances to better serve their life goals and needs, really. I uh, own and manage a practice down in Penzance, in the far southwest of England in Cornwall, and called Jackson's Wealth Management. And I'm a podcaster. I began a podcast six years ago, shot a bunch of videos for a couple of years before that. So I've been putting decent financial information online for eight years now under a brand called Meaningful Money. Okay. And what was it that encouraged you to start that Meaningful Money podcast? What was the, the idea behind that? The this well, was two answers to that question the idea behind it and then the trigger for it so now take the trigger first the trigger for it was that um well three things really came together um firstly a lot of people in different scenarios in my life told me i was good at explaining things and you know mm -hmm. when enough people say something to you yeah. enough times it kind of sinks in and you start believing it so oh, maybe okay maybe i am good at explaining things Secondly, I wanted to sort of help more people than I could ever help one-on-one. -on -one. So mm -hmm. we have very uh, long-standing relationships with our clients, you know, over many years and many generations. And that's fine, but there's only so many hours in the day. So I wanted to see uh, the benefit of good financial planning that I see, see every day in my clients. I wanted to basically spread the message of that much wider so more people could help themselves. And then the third thing that happened was that I read a book called Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk, which is really uh, the premise of that book is that if your message is uh, any good, if you're any good at delivering it, we now have the mechanism with the internet and social networks and stuff to get that message out. And if it's yeah. any good, people will show up and listen. So that was the sort of trigger, those three things coming together, really. Mm -hmm. But the reason why, it's really important that people say I'm good at marketing. I haven't got a clue at marketing, really. I've got no marketing qualifications. Um, anything that I do know, I've, I've learned by doing and by making mistakes and trying other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I am a persistent beggar. So, you know, I, I like to sort of try something and stick at it. Yeah. So the motivation was to help. It really was. It was just putting out decent financial information. We don't teach it in schools. We're not mm -hmm. born understanding the difference between a pension and an ISA and when you should have one or the other or what kind yeah. of life insurance we need. So I wanted to teach that stuff. I suppose I was definitely teaching my DNA. My dad was a teacher. So mm -hmm. um, I wanted to help folks. Yeah. Um, and I never intended it to drive business to my bricks and mortar practice that was yeah. i didn't even think that was possible yeah. online um but it's uh turned out that that is the case we'll talk about that in a bit yeah so who are your listeners is there is there a typical meaningful money listener or does it vary yeah my niche is the uk public which is not really <laughs> the niche is it <laughs> but um inevitably there's a big concentration in the southeast actually um sure why that's the case more people maybe i don't know so there's a big concentration of people there most are 30s and 40s mm -hmm. uh quite a lot have a young family or are thinking to start a family generally as you can imagine it's very often people who have had some kind of trigger to take a serious interest in their finances perhaps for the first yeah. time so maybe they've done their 20s and they've had all the fun and spent all the money or whatever that they've had and suddenly think you know what i want to buy a house or yeah. uh, i want to get married or, yeah. or whatever start a family and then it's maybe people in their 50s so i get a few of those as well who are suddenly thinking that retirement whatever that means might be looming and so they need to really sort their sort of lives out when it comes to their finances so you know, those are the triggers, really. And so generally, though, the sort of um, the avatar listener is 30s and 40s, reasonable income, wanting to take their finances seriously. That's that's the sort of, yeah, the general uh, ideal listener, if you like. Yeah, I guess you've started to answer this, but what, what value are you giving your listeners when they tune in? Well, uh, we, we're not born understanding this stuff. And the personal finance industry seems to delight in making things as complex and as impenetrable as possible. So yeah. the value really that I get, the, the strap line of the show is 
everything you need to know and everything you need to do to secure your financial future. So it's basically, if you understand this stuff and do these things, yep. pretty much your future is secured. It's guaranteed because actually personal finance is dead simple. The maths is dead easy. And once you understand the right way to invest and the right way to take advantage, take advantage of the tax rules and stuff, um, it's not difficult. And for most of us, 98% of us, we just need to do a few things consistently over time. Most of us don't need complex offshore planning or, um, you know, sort of specialist sort of taxation work or anything like that. We just need to say, spend a bit less, save yeah. a bit more, invest wisely, and make sure we've got some basic insurances in place so that we don't, you know, uh, uh, have the whole thing swept out from under us if we get a nasty diagnosis. So the value is in helping them to help themselves. That's what I want to do primarily. Yeah. So the, the financial services industry, from, from what I've learned from listening to your, your podcast, it, it's highly um, regulated, isn't it? How do you get around that issue? I know you often talk about you're not supposed to give advice. So how do you, how do you get around those issues to make sure that you're compliant, but you're still giving value to the listeners? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a fine line between information and advice. And really that line is uh, recommending specific products. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I can say this is how an ISA works and this is why it's a good idea for most of us. Yeah. Um, but the second I say, hey, you know what? Uh, XYZ Financial Company has launched a new ISA, uh, yeah. which has these great new features. You should check it out. Yeah. That would step over the line of regulation. So that would fall into something called financial promotions. So as long as you stay uh, very general, and as long as you talk about um, sort of general products like pensions or ISAs rather than a Royal London pension or a Hargreaves Lansdowne ISA and stay away from recommending particular brands, yeah. then it's okay. It, it, it's okay. Uh, the really the regulatory rules are not difficult to stay the right side of. Yeah. I think too many advisors definitely use that as an excuse not to actually get going with content marketing. So how do you, how do you deal with it? If a listener says to you, like me, for instance, I wouldn't know where to start with an ISA. Can you point me towards a selection of ISAs without recommending one in particular? Is that, is that a safe thing to do? No, that would probably still be a little bit, close to the wire um mm -hmm. but what i would say is that really uh, what i try and help people understand is that really an isa is an isa is an isa it's just a wrapper it's a, a, yeah. a, a sort of bucket if you like that you put money into what really matters is what's inside the bucket so what you're investing in mm -hmm. and again i gotta be careful with that i can't recommend specific funds or anything like that yeah. but i can tell people how to find their own funds and i have a course for that and yeah. i've done some podcast episodes on that so it's really about educating and the problem is people very often can get hung up on stuff like that which isa should i have well to be honest, as long as you got one it'll probably be all right you know mm -hmm. certainly it's better to have one than not so rather yeah. than obsess and lose too much sleep over which one better just to crack on and get on with it so you know the, it's about trying to um, remove some of this angst as well from people from mm -hmm. overthinking this stuff when they really don't need to so i'm guessing that unlike um when you see people having budget holidays and the the airline's gone bust that's slightly less likely than a nice so people aren't risking losing everything by dropping no. money into a particular place it's safer well no not really and there's two ways really you can lose money you can you can invest very badly buy mm -hmm. share in a single company and that company goes bust and you lose all your money. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that would be very unwise investing. Um, there are very good protections in the UK for uh, if a financial provider goes bust. Right. So yeah. If you do invest in an ISA in, with a bank or with an insurance company or with an investment house, uh, mm -hmm. there are limits, but you know, there's very good protections for most ordinary folks, you know, like you and me who don't have sort of tens of millions socked away. Mm -hmm. Most of them, the sort of savings that most people have, they're going to be pretty much covered by the financial services compensation scheme rule. So it's, yeah. you know, there's this coverage there. Oh, well, that's good to know. So how do you think your podcast helps you stand out from the competition? Yeah, it's not difficult to stand out in financial <laughs> services because we're an army of sort of grey suited middle-aged men, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, standing out isn't that difficult, but the advantage it gives me is I think we as a profession forget what a massive deal it is for somebody to walk through our doors because 
I mean, you know, we'd rather talk about sex and death than money very often. Yeah. And certainly our earnings, um, you know, when we ought to retire, all that sort of stuff. It, it's an uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. And so to have that conversation with a stranger, even a professional, can be, yeah, you know, a real source of worry for people. Yeah. They're worried they're going to get ripped off. They're worried they're going to be made to look stupid or um, sort of in, ill-disciplined or something like that. Yeah. So what the podcast does is it enables people to know me like me and trust me before they step in the door and when i first before the podcast when i was shooting videos it took 18 months but after 18 months i had an email out of the blue uh, from a client who gave me a, a well, prospect to that point he gave me his entire financial situation in an email i mean who wow does i know nobody does that including numbers right? i have this much here and this much here it's like oh my god I didn't put account numbers on or anything <laughs> Right. So he gave me his entire uh, thing and uh, he was a bit of an internet entrepreneur. So he, he was tech savvy and all that sort of stuff. And at the end of this great long email, he said, Pete, having watched several of your videos, we feel like we know you and can trust you. Will you work with us? Wow. And that was the first time I realized the power of putting yourself out online on video or on podcast or whatever. And now people all the time when they get in touch say, look, we feel like we know you already. We know how you work. Uh, we know you're a sort of straight talking guy. We know that you're not going to rip us off. Um, because if you were going to rip us off, nobody who was going to do that would do six years of weekly podcasts, right? You've got yeah. to really care about this stuff to do that. And so it's just, um, it's like a buy into the second round. You People yeah. already know you and trust you when they walk in the door. And that's super powerful, particularly with finance, I think. So you said there that um, you've had that, that guy um, contact you after 18 months and you've mentioned people walking through the door. Is that, is that a, a benefit that you've seen to your, your other business? Um, yeah. What other yeah. benefits have you seen from all of your stellar efforts online with video and podcasting? Um, how yeah. has that helped Jackson's? It's... Um... It's how I mean, it's, it's sort of incalculable, really. Uh, the, the certain things are a little bit touchy feely. So, my profile within my profession has obviously massively increased because there's not many of us doing what I do, yeah. which has meant I've got to meet some of the guys at the forefront of the, of the profession, have some influence with uh, professional bodies and stuff like that. That's a sort of slightly touchy feely, less tangible benefit. Um, but now uh, about 40% of our new client inquiries every year come from Meaningful Money. Uh, we have doubled our turnover and our profit in the last five years. And I would put three quarters of that in, uh, you know, in, I would credit three quarters of that increase to Meaningful Money. It's, uh, I mean, it's been transformational really. So it's taken us from uh, you know, half a million pound business to a uh, well in excess of a million pound business in less than five years. Um, and it means I'm really, really busy, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is nice but causes me other problems as well. So yeah. uh, it's brought money in, it's brought kudos to the firm and to me yeah. personally. So many benefits, which I'm extremely grateful for. That's incredible. So it's definitely been worth sharing your your industry knowledge and your years of expertise and sharing that online. That's fantastic. Yeah. The, uh, the skeptic would say, well, why would you give all the way, all your knowledge away for free when people can pay you for it? And that's just one of the weird things about the internet. You give your best stuff away for free, uh, so that the vast majority of people can take that knowledge and do it themselves. I'm convinced yeah. that most people have no need to see a financial advisor until they come to retire when it gets a bit complex and everybody mm -hmm. can benefit at that point. Um, but most people just need to, you know, find a good pension, find a good ISA, invest wisely, all that sort of stuff. And yet still, a lot of people, despite the fact that I put all the information out there, just want, you know, they're busy. And they just say, Pete, actually, yeah. yeah, how much would you charge for you to do all that for me? Yeah. And, and so we're busy. And I also get asked, you know, with it being the internet, what's the quality of the inquiries like? I mean, we're a wealth management firm. You can't hire me unless you've got a quarter million pounds to invest or any more than 100,000, right? So, it, you know, you would expect for us maybe to get a lot of sort of inquiries which are, sort of below that people without yeah. that kind of money or people with bad debt issues it just doesn't happen. Usually the vast majority of inquiries now are absolutely in our sweet spot for the kind of clients we would like. And I've had, you know, multiple seven figure investment inquiries from meaningful money and taking on some of those as clients. So we do very complex detailed financial planning work here. And those are the people who tend to approach us. That's um, incredible. Having first tried to do it themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you know? So, so it's it's amazing. That's the sort of 
the biggest objection that I get is, is apart from the fact that how do you find the time? But um, other than that, it's like, well, what kind of inquiries do you get? And the answer is uh, exactly the kind of inquiries that we want. I reckon I turn away with maybe one in 10. Wow. Um, um, and we're just trying to tool up to have enough people and enough resources here to be able to cope with all the inquiries. Uh, currently, I'm giving away to other trusted advisors around the country uh, more inquiries than I take personally. Wow. Which I need, I need to fix, right? I need to yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's just a, a capacity issue. Oh, wow. Well, that's brilliant. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, if people wanted to come and check your podcast out or see some of your videos or make an inquiry, where can they find you? Best place to go is meaningfulmoney.tv. Uh, you can find everything there. And there's a button at the top that says work with Pete. So if you do want to uh, get in touch, um, very often I just point people in the right direction on email or a quick Zoom call or something or phone call. Um, but if you want to work with us uh, professionally, then that work with Pete option will take you through to the Jackson's website. Right. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time, Pete. Thank you. No worries. Thanks for having me. Good drink. Good to see you. Thanks. Bye.